Hi and welcome back. Um, today we are going to assemble the XXLs and I'm going to show you how to do the rivets. We actually have one more um, segment that I'm going to have to do. It was going to get quite a bit too long in order for me to do the purse straps as well. That is kind of um, all on its own so I'd rather cover that again fully. Um, but what we're going to get to in this uh, segment today is how we got to this and actually my favorite, this one. So I'm going to show you how I got here and um, getting the, the body, all the slots and everything put in and also um, how I got the rivets. Um, in all of the in the corners, how I use both of my different ways of doing the um, putting the rivets in. So, um, one other thing that I want while well, I have you here, I guess, is I would like to let you know that I am going to be starting my own uh, group. So, look for that. Um, I there's so much stuff that I want to do. There's so much stuff with the XXL that I think we have all kinds of places to go. Everybody's telling me that they don't want all this to end and I'm hoping that it doesn't. So, um, hey, I'll keep making videos if you guys keep watching them. So, <laughs> um, this has been just a, a real pleasure to be able to do this and, um, and that your replies and everything just mean the world to me. So we're gonna keep going with this. If you see a group come up, um, if I've included you, I know I have some of you still as uh, friends personally. Um, I'll be putting you in my group um, uh, right away as soon as I get it up and going. Um, if you see something that says, I don't know, maybe it might have XXL in it, it may have something along the line of friends of Debbie Hunker or something like that, know that that's what I'm doing and if you do not want to be part of the group, please just feel free to uh, take yourself out. Um, no hard feelings. I, you won't hurt my feelings. So anyway, that's where we're going with all of this. Um, I think if I have my own group, then I actually have a little bit more control of uh, sharing some information with you and stuff. Um, I don't know where it's going to go. I wasn't expecting all of this. So it's, it's been a real, um, it's a real pleasure. I'm just having um, a great time. So I look forward to talking to you, you people some more. Um, now I understand why the Americans say y'all, because <laughs> I'd like to say y'all. Um, and I know that there there might be some men out there. I know when I look at my uh, stats and stuff, there are men that are watching. So um, anyway, <laughs> uh, you people, y'all, everyone, um, thank you again. And um, we'll be looking for one more segment um, that should be out in the next couple of days. So thanks a lot. Just gonna share this quick with you. To me, there's nothing like organization. Um, this to me is just a thing of beauty. Um, there's bling in there and it's organized. And this is actually um, all my stuff that is all my little uh, hardware pieces that comes from Emmeline Bags. She has just such pretty stuff. And I'm kind of starting to collect everything in the four colors that she carries. So I guess actually, sorry, she carries five. Um, she also has the um, antiqued, I'm not exactly sure what she calls it, but um, yeah. So the shiny stuff is what I like to work with. And um, so that's, that's my little piece. Before I go any further with the um, assembly, I just wanted to show you this and I didn't clarify this. Um, <laughs> I guess this is just to show you just how great I am. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I don't take myself too seriously. Um, when I pressed and remember how the lining, I pressed um, the seams back on themselves. Now this is what happens. For people who are having problems getting your lining to uh, lay flat inside and are really having to work it, well, first of all, because this is open, we have full access. We can just actually, like this is my lining, the underside of it, you can actually just pull that in. But by pressing these pieces back, so remember, this is what I did. I pressed this back on itself. 
when it went in, it just, sorry, I'm trying not to move around too much here. It just fits in. It just tucks into that corner. First of all, it's an eighth of an inch smaller than the outside because I tapered the seam just a little bit. So when I, when I go to um, fold this back and make it lay flat, it just does. So it just tucks itself right in into that seam and it's all good to go. So right now, um, yeah, I'm just getting things marked so that I can find my center. So just wanted to clarify that. So here we are. Uh, we made it this far and um, hopefully uh, you guys haven't had too many problems so far. Um, I've had some really great comments. You guys seem to be doing well. Um, it's been so much fun, I can't even tell you. So um, I wish I could pan out a little further, but this is where we're at. Um, I don't, my camera equipment uh, right now is uh, not the best, so I'm making do with what I have. We have the body all assembled, we have our flap in. Now we wanna actually put all of the pieces together. So I'm just gonna move this back so yeah, so this is this is the whole body. Um, the slot here, I've actually just done the little band-aid thing. Um, I've used, it's only uh, three quarters of an inch wide, and then just whatever length I had, I just used a scrap. I don't want to get this too wide so that just in case uh, we end up seeing it when we sew everything down. This way we shouldn't. I have an inch and a half to work with. So I'm going to just pull this in so that you can see where the flap is because we're going to be kind of doing some measurements again. So I'm going back to my trusty template and I never keep let these get too far away because I want to keep on uh, making sure that things are square. I'll show you what I'm doing right now. Um, if you remember from my templates and the body videos, um, I've actually done little holes where my points are. So I've got my lines, like on my pattern, I've got all my lines are marked everywhere. So I can still make sure that I'm lined up with everything. Now I can see from where these points are that my flap is exactly where I was hoping it would be. Going down here, Pull this up for you again because this is straight now I'm not only no oh, there I am. go again sorry here is my hole I'm at the corner I have I'm at the corner of my flap and I've got the extra sticking out for my seam allowance so this is all uh, taken into account my seam allowance as well so I know if my points are right at the corners then I should be square across everything should be sitting in the position that I need it to so I'm gonna put square that back up put everything in position and I come down here and I'm going to I'm actually just gonna zip underneath here yeah you can't see me okay I'm just gonna mark these corners. Now this is again we've got the bump so we want to make sure one of the things is too because we did the square of I did foam inside there I can actually feel that I can feel where the edge of my foam is I can feel that all the way along and my foam lines up almost perfectly with my mark there and I'm just ever so slightly over on this side as well but it's close enough and my husband will tell you if I say it's close enough then it definitely is <laughs> because I'm not a very big subscriber of oh that's good enough so I have my my piece, this is my card slot pockets. And I'm going to, again, make sure that I'm squared up with the top. 
all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm also going to, I'm worried about centering this this way as well. So I'm going to, I've got my mark here. I want to keep it on that, but I also want to make sure I'm centering this way and making sure I'm on my marks this way. Again, I don't pin it down because we need to get it out of the way right, right away anyway. Now, um, I don't know how to say this. Um, some of the, I'm not criticizing and what people do, uh, again, this is what I do. Um, this is what works for me. To me, I see a lot of these flaps folded over and they're sticking out when this is over. They stick out too far for my preference. So what I'm going to do is I am really going to, I'm not going to just totally yard on this, but I'm going to pull it over so that it is nice and tight. There's, there's bulk here. And there's really nothing that you can do about that. I mean, it's, um, it is what it is because I have also, um, I've done the contrast, so I've got extra layers there. So I'm going to really focus on pulling that over nice and tight against that flap. And I'm going to clip it. I don't want to push this piece over. One thing that does help in, in the way that we're doing the, the XXL is that there's that extra foam piece. Now here you can see, if I pull this over too far, then I've got my little back piece that I did, some little contrast there underneath the purse. I'm going to pull that just so that, I hope you can see that, is just at the edge. It's just not quite peeking out. And again at the bottom, I want to watch this. So I have my mark right here. That I want pulled in nice and tight. And clip it. I have the brown one put together as well and what I didn't do and what I'm why I'm really emphasizing this corner is that I didn't quite do that with this one so when it's sitting it's not bad um, I'm not going to take it apart and redo it because it is just a little bit on the outside here um, but had I just pulled that, paid just a little bit more attention to it and just pulled that in a little bit tighter when I was folding, that wouldn't be there. This side is really quite nice and even. So now I'm going to the other side. And now here, I'm going to start right in the center. So I know where my center, where this flap lines up. So I'm going to pull this over again, nice and tight. Now I'm going to go to the front here. Now this is, there's a little bit of added difficulty in that we've got this, <clears throat> we've got the um, hardware on the front that causes a little bit of bump. So we can't really lay it completely flat. But in order for this not to gape open, I want to, I want to make sure that that stays nice and tight all the way across so that it's nice and tucked into this corner. Because sometimes if it's, um, if you're trying to lay it flat and you can't, now if I just 
went ahead and got this as flat as I can. I've got the hump here and then folded this over. When I open this up, you can see there's that it, it already there's a little gap in there. If I make sure that this is nice and tight, fold that over and I know where my mark is so I want to make sure that I get it folded all the way back to my mark. Then when I open this up, I mean if I push it then it's it's there but once it's all riveted together and stuff, sewn and, and riveted, that, that big gap won't be there. And I'm just going to kind of slowly work at it a little bit here. Now we're back to the top corner. So again, I'm going to give it a little bit of tension. I mean, I'm not yarding on this maybe as much as it looks like, but I want this corner, I want this nice and tight. As, as tight as I can possibly get it within reason. And again, just pulling that up against my card slots. Now I can see I didn't get my this uh, contrast piece quite uh, centered. I don't think in the grand scheme I'm going to notice it, but um, but there is a little. It's about oh an eighth of an inch or so over on this side, and this side is flush. But for a first time trying this, I think it, I'm doing not too bad for this. So. Do this one, get one more clip in here. I know when I go to my machine, I'm gonna have to take a lot of my clips off, so, for wherever I start. Okay, so now, this is all ready to go. You know that this, and we can, we can audition this as well before we actually sew it. Fold this up, fold this down, lock that. Course things aren't straight but now even even look now I mean you can see this here on both sides but it's actually tucked behind the flap it just has to sit straight so um, so yeah so that makes a big difference then we don't we don't have little sides that that um, slip out because we we know that we've got everything tucked in as much as we can before I get um, involved with actually sewing those side seams, um, I had lots of questions about my industrial machine. This is this is my new baby, and I really really love it. Um, if you're in the Edmonton area, then um, you're gonna go to Central Sewing, and you're gonna tell them that I sent you. And this is the Titan TN. 650 BL so that's what central sewing actually um, brands their name their their machines as if you are other places um, it's actually the equivalent of the conso P as in Peter 1206 R B as in boy so um, again, it's a Conso P1206RB. So if you're interested in looking at a machine like this, uh, it's fantastic. It has the, um, it's a compound feed, meaning it has the uh, needle feed. So the needle actually helps bring the, whatever materials you're using, um, pull that through, and also the walking foot. So. That's the little interview of my baby, and um, I'll get on sewing those side seams. Now I'm just going to get going here, but I had to take my clip off right at the very edge uh, in order to be able to get started sewing. So before I actually take my first stitch, I'm going to um, pull back on this a little bit because 
because it's let go, you can kind of see there, um, right here, that now I've got a little bit of a gap. What I want to do is I want to pull that back over again. So I'm just going to kind of pull on this edge so that that pulls back and it's going to give me a cleaner start. So I'm going to move back over. I'm going to start so that I can start with a back stitch. I'm not very <laughs> used to this machine, so it kind of scares me sometimes. And again, this is a little awkward working around here. All right. Okay. So again, I'm not going to pull super hard, but I want to just kind of make sure that I'm not losing the tension that I actually have so that that is pulled up on that seam. see too that right here I've got a little bit of a piece of that patent is going to end up sticking out again for the first time trying it there's not much I can do other than take everything apart so I'm going to hold that so that I don't lose the placement of that Now I'm just doing the other side. Back in here. To work a little harder when it's going over all of those card slots. So again I had to take my clip off so I'm just gonna pull on that just a little bit. Gets a little tough. I've got both of my side seams done. You can see by when I had to, when I pulled on this just a little bit, this pulled in really nice and tight. From the from the back, I mean, yep, there's a little bit there, but it is it is about hmm, maybe an eighth of an inch or so. So in order to audition this, um, just in case I have everything all wonky, um, I'm gonna just close this up. And see, because if I have to re-sew something, now is the time to do it. If I had to take out this side stitching to adjust things so that it laid um, square, that's the time to do it. So if you can see, oh, <laughs> I'm actually very happy with this too. Um, I'm just loving this purse. This one is going to be mine. I'm. Uh, can you imagine how many uh, comments? <laughs> I do a fair amount of shopping, so there's a lot of people that are going to see this sucker. So. Um, and uh, so it's a pretty good advertisement. So from the back as well. Now, yeah, this this I didn't, um, I mean, I caught enough of this. I think to do it over again, I probably would do them both back a little bit, but this side is really nice. So it just wasn't quite centered, but again, um, for my own purse, I am happy with it. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the card This is This was my mistake. Um, I have my zippers. This was my learning experience. I got my zippers going the opposite ways. I'm going to find my center. Now this one I did the little band-aid thing on the back. Um, 
one thing if you're if you're at all concerned like I know that mine is laying really really flat and is really nice I know that my if I look inside I'm not bunched up and I did really nothing other than again um, ironing the side seams on the lining so I did nothing really to it it's neat laying nice and flat if you're concerned that in sewing this down that something is going to move what I would suggest is from this side is do outside of your stitching line or or inside of the final stitching line is just do some do a real long basting stitch just so that you have both of those that you can take it out really easy that it doesn't have to be huge but just something that will hold them I don't think you're gonna have a problem so I have this folded actually well I know where my center is <laughs> this is the one where uh, this was my first one and my side seams I didn't do when I was assembling the pockets I didn't go all the way down the side seam um, so I did once I did one side then later on I did the other side coming this way so things weren't lined up just exactly right so all I did to fix that in this one was I just put a little tiny um, row of of top stitching just so that everything was held in place so to find my center I mean it's pretty obvious um, because that's where my seam is but I'm just gonna mark it anyway so for myself I'm gonna pin you can um, squish it and um, put a crease in there and then mark it with a pin whatever works for you this is what I'm doing so I'm gonna open that up I'm going to mark Get my pins out of the way. Go this way so you can see what I'm doing. Now I know my center marks are here. Now I want, I'm going to have an inch and a half width of seams. So I'm going to start at center and I'm going to go three quarters of an inch. So on my mark there and on my mark here. So here I have my first mark. I'm sure you can see that. Then I'm going to go to the other side. Instead of trying to mark another three quarters of an inch, I'm just going to go and I'm going to find my inch and a half, put it on my mark. So I have my two marks. So I know where my center is marked here on each side. I know where my center is here because there's a seam there. I'm going to, now all I have to do, a oh, little bit of cat here. I guess when you have four cats in the house, and yes, we have a big house and we live on an acreage too, so they're kind of inside outside cats. Um, I'm going to center it this way in between my seams. This is a little difficult because we were going through so much, so many layers. I'm just going to kind of use pins just to hold it there. And there we go. And back to my machine. So now I'm ready to actually sew this down to the body. Um, I'm starting at the edge. Um, this is where again you can see my little bit of top stitching there. I'm just basically going to stitch right over top of that once more. Um, but uh, and I'm going to start on the edge so that I don't have to back stitch and I can just when I come around I'll just stitch over that again. Um, so yeah, here we go. Now I'm going to be really careful because I want to make sure, sorry, I'm out of the way. I'm going to put my needle down, lift my presser foot up. I have a knee lift. 
before I started sewing as well, um, because I just had the, the pins pushed in just to kind of tack it in there, I double checked before I started sewing to make sure that my center mark here was still on that center seam. Again, everything is lined up. Not that there's a lot I can do about it at this point, but I want to get right on that corner. Coming back to that edge. Okay. Now I did, didn't back stitch when I started, and I did that on purpose because I don't want a whole bunch of stitching. And I can't. There we go. So I'm actually just. You can see where my my thread is back here. So this is where this is where I started. Sorry, this is where it ended. This is where I started. So I just came back and just sewed over that so that I didn't have a bunch of back stitching when I stopped and start started. Now I have all my stitching on the inside and you guys probably know enough about me already that details matter to me. So when I actually changed my, my thread so that on the back this time it would be black, just so that it doesn't show quite so much because I want this to show. I don't want a whole bunch of stripes. So I just changed this on the back. It's just not quite so noticeable. So we have it. This is all sewn down. We've got our card slots in there. Everything's good. So I'm gonna take this over. I'm just gonna fold this back and I'm just going to give it a quick press on both sides just so that's nice and crisp. So there we go. Now we're ready for rivets. Now I'm back to using my template again. I have all my marks on here so that's all my guidelines. Now if I really wanted to line everything up exactly perfectly um, I could do that. It's not going to make much difference. What I can do, now I'm actually, I want to mark these lines because I want to know exactly where um, my pockets are, where those folds are supposed to be. So I can lay it on there. It, it's not going to matter um, whether I have it over here um, exactly lined up, sorry, um, exactly lined up with the edge where my fold is supposed to be or whether I just put this line on where that seam is. The most important thing is to make sure that these lines, these lines here are actually lined up with my stitching line. So I've got my lines on my template lined up with my stitching lines and they work out perfectly. I have this line on that seam and sorry about the shine here. Um, and I've got the, I've got where my marks are. So I can do this however I want. I actually, I'm just gonna fold this back because I can see through 
my plastic I can see where those are I'm gonna mark mark those and I'm gonna go over to my other side line everything up exactly the same way mark that one and mark that one now because I have this marked, I know that is where I'm going to fold. So I'm going to fold that right on that line. I'm going to give that a pinch. Now I found this, everything is so much stiffer on this one as well. Um, and I guess possibly I could have made my pockets a little bit bigger. Um, again, this is, this is, these literally, the ones that I'm demoing, are my second and third XXLs. So, and I did quite a bit of the stuff different with these ones. It can be the thickness of the interfacing, it could be a whole bunch of things. Um, could be the seam allowance, it could be the fact on this that I did a double pocket. If you find that you don't like it and that it's that you want it a little bit bigger, simply adjust your, the size of your pattern pieces to whatever suit. That's the great thing about this whole this whole process is that everything is customizable. So I've got quite a bit of room here. I'm okay with that though. So I'm just gonna pinch this down further, but I wanna make sure that I'm still staying on that crease. So I'm gonna pinch all the way down. I know I'm catching my pocket there. And I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to actually just clip this down there you can see I'm gonna be riveting up here but I'm gonna clip it down there so that I can leave my clips where they are again this one pinch where that is bring my pocket up again I have quite a quite a bit of room I would rather have that me personally I would rather have that than have my pockets um, my zipper pockets stick up above it so I'm okay with that I might next time um, between the two of these pockets I probably have half an inch um, I could probably go ahead and alter my pattern piece if I if it was important to me I would make it about an inch longer so again there's I'm gonna pinch that increase that all the way down if I really want to Stick that in there, get that out of the way, clip it, the last one here, pinch that, and in it goes. So if you want to see already what that's going to look like, that's what we have. There's two methods. Um, I have two, two different tools that I use for punching my holes. On my first little intro, um, I showed you this set. It's a little, the little punch set. These little punches just come out and you can replace them with, there's several different sizes. I always use the very smallest one on this and and this is great and I wouldn't be without it because it doesn't totally replace the pliers kind of one but for what we're doing here um, this it was a little bit of an investment I got a good one um, many years ago I had a really cheap one and when you go to try and um, clamp down these things would move and then the hole was all wonky these ones are really good ones. They're sharp, um, well worth it so far. If you're doing a lot of riveting, absolutely, I wouldn't hesitate. They're very, very um, convenient. So I have, because this fabric is so easy to mark, um, I'm going to use my little ruler, again, just my little square. And I'm going to go, and this is personal preference, um, I know where my fabric and stuff is, 
So I'm going to go down an inch and I'm going to go in a half an inch. And I'm just going to mark my hole. I'm going to do that on all of these. The next thing is going to be that we need to actually um, cut the holes. So I know where my mark is. I'm going to take my punch, give it a good squeeze. These ones are nice and sharp, so you can really you can hear it. I'm going to go ahead and do all of them. So I'm going to show you, I've got my hole here, and I'm going to put my post through the whole thing. Now I'm using small rivets. The post length I think is six millimeters. This is just making it to the top of my fabric, of the material that I'm going through. That's really what I want. Um, I don't want that post sticking way up. As long as it makes it through, and then I'm going to put my, I just, the cap kind of snaps on there for now. This is an, a little bit of an investment. Uh, I'll pan out, see if I can for you. Yeah. That's my, sorry, I'm not doing very good here. Um, that's my rivet, or my, yeah, my rivet press. I actually have purchased it for doing snaps, but um, my handy husband has made some adapters so that other, my other dies can fit into there. I'm gonna get my clip out of the way, and it's gonna take a little bit of wangling here, but this is, this is an investment. Uh, these are, uh, probably getting close to $300 for one of these, but I tell you, it is handy. Um, you do have to be careful because it doesn't take much pressure. That's about it to get that rivet in there, and, and it just does a beautiful job. I will show you with the little, um, with this little set as well, where you have the, the little anvil and um, and this little piece that you pound on. When I do the inside rivets, that's where that one comes in handy. Okay, so I have my all my rivets holding everything in. Some people like to do two rivets, whatever floats your boat. This is from the top. I'm gonna squish all this down so that it just, so it, however it closes the nicest. Then I'm going to take each one of these just the way that it closes, make sure that it, so that I get the center of it. I'm going to pinch that and I'm going to clip it down below where I actually want to put the rivet. Again, holding that so it's square so I know where the natural fold is going to be. This side is much easier for me to clip with the camera in front of me.
Okay, so now I have all of those kind of just where they want to be. I think looks good to me. So again, now I'm just going to eyeball this. You can measure it if you want to. Um, I don't want to be, and I'll just mark it so that you know where I'm actually doing this. I don't, I want my rivet right in the corner. I don't want it out here. I don't want it, you know, I don't want it too deep. Um, cause I still want to be able to open the purse. I just want, I want the rivet just to hold that. So I'm just going to go nice kind of up in the corner and probably about a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch each way. And that's where I'm going to punch my holes. Have to kind of get in there a little bit. Give it a good squeeze. So I'm going to do that for all of them. One of the things about the way that I teach, um, or the way I explain things, is I learn the best by understanding why I'm doing something. So that's probably why I explain things um, <laughs> to death. Uh, some of you appreciate it. I don't know if all of you do or not, but. Um, I would love to have some feedback from, especially from the more advanced sewers um, that basically do this over and over again. If I could have some constructive criticism as to whether I go too slow, whether I'm losing um, viewership because of that, um, I would really appreciate it. I would love to hear back from you guys. One of the things you can see here, I folded it and I just let it go where it was supposed to. When I go to punch my holes, I'm actually, my clip is still on there, but I want the, to move that up so that this is even. It was kind of wonky before, um, so it would have ended up kind of like this. I want that to be even when I put my rivet in. And I promised you that I would show you how to use the anvil and the other little setting tool. First of all, we need a, a base of some sort. We want everything on um, as uh, sturdy of a base as we can possibly get it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be putting the um, rivet in the back here. So I'm gonna set this down underneath it. This is my little anvil. It's gonna sit just on top of that block. I could have done this beforehand. Again, I'm using small rivets. Now this is, this is an example of um, the rivet sitting way up out of there. I don't have smaller rivets. This is a small. So I'm gonna be careful though when I actually um, pound my rivet down. What I find when the, when the um, Posts are so long, it's very easy to get your rivets so that they end up, when, when you're pressing them down, they slide and then they're offset. It's not the end of the world. To me, it just doesn't look really great. So I'm gonna have to move you up a little bit. So I have my base, I have my anvil, I've got my rivet, my setting tool with the little concave side on top there and I've got my mallet so I'm just gonna give this a few taps this you have oh, didn't do it hard enough that's gonna hold now and this did slide on me a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, let me see if I can do, show you this. Because my fabric is really quite thin, um, I don't know if you can tell this or not. It's hard to see, but the rivet is kind of offset. Again, not the end of the world. It's just not how I would prefer to have it. But it will hold, it won't pull out, and it'll still look pretty. There's still some bling there. So 
So again, same thing. Get my post through the hole. The cap is on. My base, my anvil, my setting tool. There, that one went on better. I just hit those hard enough that my rivet would set. Um, if you smash that down, it's going to turn on you. The, the post is just too long. It's only meant that the post goes in. I'm going to show you. The post goes into, or the cap goes onto the post. Can't see through my camera. <laughs> see, here I am all by myself laughing at my own jokes. So that's going to snap on there. And the idea is just to, <laughs> and I have butter fingers too. Um, the idea of it is just that this is going to get squished down enough that the inside is going to going to bend enough that it'll just hold. Like this will come apart now. But we want that. Um, boy, at least my purse catches it. You can see oh, it's not focusing in very well. There's that little little bit of a bend there and all that does is bend over so that it so that the cap stays on. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the rest of them. So there we have um, it so far. Um, we've got the body sewn together. Everything is lining up really nice. Open it up. I've got rivets on the inside. I've got rivets on the outside. I might do a little bit more work. This one I'm not uh, totally happy with the way it looks. I don't know, maybe it just needs another rivet at the top. Um, but I might play around with that a little bit more. But other than that, we are good to go. I'm just loving the look of it. So um, I guess we do actually have one more. I was thinking that this was it and then we were done. But we're not because um, I still have to cover the handles. But that one needs to be one on its own as well because there's quite a bit to cover there and um, and then we're finished. So uh, I hope uh, you guys are liking the projects that you're working on. I've gotten lots of responses back saying that you're uh, working away at them. Some have finished some, which I think is absolutely fantastic. I love to see the pictures. So keep those coming and keep the comments coming. Let me know uh, what you think. We are nowhere near done, uh, just so that you know. <laughs> Uh, I have some other projects that I still have to get finished, but we'll get the handle done. Then I think we're going to just go right ahead and start doing some modifications. Um, I have lots of ideas for the inside to make it actually even more of an organizer purse than it already is. So I think there's just um, endless possibilities as, what, as to what can be done on the inside of these as well as the outside, but um, I think I'm going to focus a little bit more on what's inside of these. So I will see you um, in another couple of days um, when I can get the handle uh, tutorial all finished up and we'll get handles put on these two. But uh, this is what we have so far with those two. Oh, I'm going to just take this right out of here. That's what we have. So. I hope you're happy with yours uh, so far. I'm really quite pleased with the way that mine have turned out. So I will see you later. Thanks.